the U.S. women's national soccer team lost to Sweden in the round of 16 at the World Cup in a game that went to overtime, 0-0. They lost in a penalty kick shootout. U.S. star Megan Rapino was one of the women who missed her penalty kick in that shootout. And I wrote the following as my opinion of the U.S. women's national team. I always root for the Team USA, all sports. I really don't take joy in the earliest elimination ever for the U.S. women's national team. But this team came to be defined by arrogant celebrity activists who went out of their way to exhibit shame in the United States, begin the process of destroying their own sports by advocating for men to play women's sports, incurring victimization with false narratives about equal pay. Nobody made it harder to root for them than the U.S. women's national team. There are women on this team who have poured their heart and soul and sweat into this team, the United States, who are proud Americans focused on soccer. I hope those players define the future of the U.S. women's national team. This team came to be defined by many players, but most notably Megan Rapino. Rapino, after this loss, was asked what her most um, memorable moment was as a member of the U.S. women's national team, and she said, The fight for equal pay. The fight for equal pay was a farce. It is a farce. The women's team is not underpaid by almost any metric, certainly not in terms of any metric that is correlated to capitalism, how much they draw, how much they earn. Most of the pay in soccer, by the way, is farmed out in form of a bonus pool to the men's and women's national team players. The bonus pool is largely funded by the World Cup. The Men's World Cup is the most popular sporting event on the planet, and every men's team receives a cut, and then every player on each men's team receives a cup. It doesn't matter how far you went, at least in terms of the women winning the Women's World Cup and the men making it out of the group stage of the Men's World Cup, because the Men's World Cup is so much more popular by billions The men make more. What more the women throughout this fight have negotiated for a constant pay, a secure pay, more or less downside risk. And when they did that, they gave up some of their upside. But they always painted it as victimization. They always painted it as sexism. They painted it as this big injustice. And they were awarded the Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs. Can't win the World Cup, but you can win an ESPY for their fight for equal pay. I think this women's team was, over time, sucked into celebrity activism. Carly Lloyd, legend for the U.S. women's national team, said they're focused on things outside of the pitch, off the field, more so than what's happening on the field at the World Cup. They became addicted to activism, civil rights, the cloak of victimhood that can then turn you into the modern-day civil rights warrior from victim to hero. But weirdly, just as they're fighting for equal pay, players like Alex Morgan and Megan Rapinoe said, oh, yeah, we should definitely allow men to join women's sports. Trans women are women. Another cause another civil rights victimization movement, another chance to cast themselves first as victims and then as heroes. They would destroy their own sport to continue to feed their own ego. I think it's reprehensible to climb up the top of the ladder. By the way, we're great at soccer, but let's be real about this. Okay, we got to it early. We're not this big sexist society that deprives women of their opportunities. In fact, we're the most progressive society on the planet. The reason we dominate soccer isn't because they were all greater athletes than the girls from Brazil or England, but it's because we gave opportunities here long before the rest of the world accepted the idea of women's soccer. Soccer is in the blood, football in their terms, is in the blood of almost every other nation on the planet, but not America. It's not in our culture. It's not in our blood. We dominated women's soccer because we got to it first, because we were the least 
sexist. We got a leg up, about 30 years leg up, and we dominated. Not because of tactics or skills, yes, because of athleticism, but because we invested in this. And in large part, what you're seeing with these women losing in the round of 16 is the rest of the world is now catching up. Now the rest of the world has embraced women's soccer, or beginning to, and the gap has closed. So before you sit here and kneel before the anthem, kneel before the flag, and show show shame in the United States of America, understand that the United States of America is why you have those medals, why you have that fame, why you were put on a stage to dominate for 30 years. these, These women made it very, very hard to root for them. They danced around like fashion icons at this World Cup. You can see videos of Rapino and the other girls like kind of mean mugging, sunglasses and berets and all black outfits stomping around on the field. You know, I have a son whose confidence borders along cockiness. He plays soccer. He was a practice, this was a couple of weeks ago now, and they were having fun taking penalty kicks at the end of practice. And I watched him. I was sitting on the sidelines at practice, and I watched him. And he was kind of, you know, he was having a good time. I'm, I'm going to give him that. Like, this is fun for him. He likes it, you know. He's not, like, making anybody smaller. He's not trash-talking people down. He just trash-talks himself up. He has fun. He prances around. And he kind of did all this stuff when he went up to take his penalty kick. He stood like Ronaldo, feet spread wide apart, arms in a heroic stance out wide. He stands like Superman, right? And then he does the Neymar short, you know, really small, tiny steps as he runs up. I don't know if you can picture it, but it's these, you know, cutesy little dramatic small steps to kind of prolongs your moment with the spotlight on you as you're about to take your penalty kick. And then he runs up and he takes his penalty kick and he skies it, just like Rapino, over the top of the goal. And after practice, I said to him this, hey, man, listen, if you want to be that guy, you can be that guy. I'm not going to take that away from you. If you want to be cocky, it's enabling in sports. You always need to be a good sport. You need to be a good teammate. But if your confidence is on the side of cockiness and you have a good time and you like a little showmanship, fine. But if you're going to be that guy, then you have to be that guy. You have to deliver. There's nothing wrong with being Ronaldo. Arrogant and cocky and full of himself with a big ego. As long as you live up to your arrogance and cockiness and big ego. If you want to be that guy, you better be that guy. Jordan can be as cocky as he wants. But you can't do that and then sell your kick over the the goal. If Rapino and the women's national team want to be arrogant and cocky and fashion icons and celebrity activists, be that guy. But you got to win. Nobody cares about that guy or gal when they lose. This women's national team was inherently unlikable and hard to root for. And yet I still, many people out there disliked them, actively disliked them and actively rooted against them. I did not. I won't. I do not root against the red, white, and blue. That's my thing. I don't do it. I don't do it in the Olympics. I don't do it in the World Cup. I don't do it in any situation. I root first for America. There hasn't really been an America versus Texas showdown that I can think of. And that'll put me to the test. But I root first for America. But these women made it hard. And here's hoping that the next generation of U.S. women's national team players are defined by those women who pour their heart and soul and sweat into soccer and are proud, proud to represent America.